Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 6, Chapter 3, Text 17, Yamaraj instructs his messengers. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Tasyatma Tantrasya Hare Radeshitu Rasya Maya Dipatir Mahatmana Payena Duta Ihi Vai Manoharas Charantita Drupa Guna Sobhava Translation The Supreme Personality of Godhead is self sufficient and fully independent. He is the master of everyone and everything, including the illusory energy. He has his form, qualities, and features. And similarly, his order carriers, the Vaishnavas, who are very beautiful, possess bodily features, transcendental qualities, and a transcendental nature almost like his. They always wander within this world with full independence. Report. By His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta says, Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Yamaraj was describing the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Supreme Controller, but the order carriers of Yamaraj were very eager to know about the Vishnu Dutas who had, been defe- who had defeated them in their encounter with Ajamil. Yamaraj therefore stated that the Vishnu Dutas resemble the Supreme Personality of Godhead in their bodily features, transcendental qualities, and nature. In other words, the Vishnu Dutas or Vaishnavas are almost as qualified as the Supreme Lord. Yamaraj informed the Yamadutas that the Vishnu Dutas are no less powerful than Lord Vishnu. Since Vishnu is above Yamaraj, the Vishnu Dutas are above the Yamadutas. Persons protected by the Vishnu Dutas, therefore, cannot be touched by the Yamadutas. So, um, we are hearing from uh, this great literature, Srimad Bhagavatam, this ripened fruit of the tree of Vedic knowledge. Uh, Prabhupada has given us these uh, wonderful translations and purports uh, for our great benefit. Uh, the, the reality is that uh, until the until recent time, you know, of, of course, time itself is a whole discussion. Uh, but we are now in this age of Kali. It's uh, only four hundred and thirty-two thousand years. Before that, uh, as we know, we go through the four cycles. Satya Yoga, uh, Dwapar, Treta, and then Kali Yoga. And these four cycles, they're 4.32 uh, million of years. It's a long time in our calculation, but also a very short time in other, other calculations. Uh, and uh, Just to, it's always uh, uh, good to keep things in perspective. It's always good to keep things in perspective. And then uh, the discussion and our contemplation takes on a deeper meaning. So, uh, the four yogas, 4.32 million years. Uh, how many of those yogas in one day of um, the creator of this universe, Brahma, uh, 1,000. So 4.32 billion years. And then uh, that's one day of Brahma, one night of Brahma is the same. And 
this message as we have received in this uh, age is really given to us in this way through the appearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his whole transcendental uh, army of which Srila Prabhupada is the commander of that army. This information is give, given to us once in the day of a night of Brahma. So it's given to us in, in, in our human time frame once in 8.6 billion years. Hmm? So, uh, are we fortunate or not that one, once in uh, 8.6 billion years this message is available to us and that means um, if we don't uh, receive this message properly now as all of we, all of us are trying to do if we don't receive this message properly now then when is the next time this message is going to be available to us how long we have to wait 8.6 who is willing to wait for 8.6 billion years and keep taking births again and again and again to get this message again of Srimad Bhagavatam from Srila Prabhupada. Who is willing to do that? Anybody here in our assembly of devotees? I was in Hyderabad and I was you know, asking the devotees if you know that you can take you, some destination you want to go to and you, you know that you can take a flight there tomorrow, will you take it if the next flight is after 8.6 billion years? Will you, are you willing to wait that long for the next flight? Hmm? So this is, the point is in context that this is a very rare opportunity hmm, that we have received this, uh, this transcendental information. And even in our so-called 70, 80, 90, 100 years in this life, which goes very quickly, uh, you are all much, you know, much younger age group, much younger bodies. But be assured that aging happens very quickly. Because only a uh, little while ago, I was thinking I'm 30 years old. Hmm? But just like that, I am almost 74 now. Just like that it happened, almost overnight. So time goes very quickly. No? What, if, what if you wake up tomorrow morning and you find that you're 70 years old? Huh? It's quite a shock. So time goes very quickly. And this Bhagavatam Srila Prabhupada brought to the West, it was unknown, this knowledge, this information. Just barely, you know, 50, 60 years ago. You could say 1970s when the translations were available. And uh, now it's 2021, so let's say 50 years ago, this information really became available to the rest of the world. Otherwise, the message of Bhagavatam was hidden and protected and not known. And even if it was available in some Sanskrit or Hindi language, uh, which I'm not sure, I don't think it was in Hindi language even. But the way Srila Prabhupada sacrificed his life to translate, to give us the word-by-word -word translation, then give the verse translation, and then some explanation purport, this happened just very recently. And I think Madhu Pandit Prabhu was saying that his contact with Srila Prabhupada was really, he was in IIT Mumbai and he came across Srimad Bhagavatam, right? He was reading Prabhupada's books. So same with, with uh, myself. Uh, I was on campus in, uh, uh, in USA for graduate studies 
and one brahmachari like one of you, white bodied, he was passing out back to Godhead magazines. So I was shocked, what is this person in the saffron doing here, standing in the middle of this campus and handing out this magazine called Back to Godhead. So I got this magazine and, uh, and I opened it and I started reading and I was astounded by how much clarity was there just in some one simple article. It was astounding. It's like I had never heard this kind of truthful, clear explanation of life ever before. Hmm? So that was in 1971 or something like that. My point is that um, the opportunity we have that you're all taking advantage of is not to be taken lightly at all. Hmm. This is a great, um, we call it causeless. There's no real reason why, there's no justification why we have been given this very fortunate situation. There's no explanation. There's no um, plan that if you go to this college and then you go to that college and do something else, then you will contact Srila Prabhupada, you will receive his message, you will take up his mission, you will hear from him. There's no given path like that in the material world. So it just happens. Things may be organized as they are so nicely uh, amongst all of you. You have different programs, you have a certain process that you follow. But who takes this up and who does not take it up? Everybody does not take this process up. Even though the same opportunity is there, everybody does not take it up. Few, only few people take it up. So, uh, therefore, we are reading here about Vishnu Dutas and the Vishnu Dutas are being compared to uh, almost as good, good as God. Almost as good as God. They are being described almost as powerful as the Supreme Lord. The Vishnu Dutas, the assistance of the Supreme Lord and the Vaishnavas, which is what we are trying to be. It's not so easy to be Vaishnava, Prabhupada says. This. We are on the path to trying to become Vaishnavas, but actually it's, uh, our goal is to become real Vaishnavas. Not that we have become, it's not so easy. Prabhupada says in many places, not so easy to be Vaishnav. So our goal is to become Vaishnavas. We know for sure who is Vaishnav, as good as God. Who is that? Srila Prabhupada. We know for sure Srila Prabhupada is that person. And we know that we are in the care of Srila Prabhupada. We know that. We are in the care of Srila Prabhupada. We are always in the role of being a student. We never become equal to Prabhupada. We never become uh, uh, partners with Srila Prabhupada. We never become better than Srila Prabhupada. We are always his servants. Always. And those statements are there. That never changes. Prabhupada is always Prabhupada. He is always the master. And all of us are always the servants and students. That is the only relationship. As soon as you think that relationship is something different, partnership, you know, um, equality, better, or I am the master now, Prabhupada is not the master anymore, he is the previous master, I am the new master. All of this becomes a serious impediment and even an offense in this journey that we are on to try to become Vaishnavas, hmm? says the Lord. So, um, the pastime here is that these uh, Vishnu Dutas, in the pastimes of Ajamil, they have uh, defeated the uh, Yamadutas, servants of Yamaraj. Yamaraj is there to <coughs> deal with the um, 
next life, all the judgment he makes, we go to the Yamaraja's court, uh, and our whole life is, is presented to Yamaraj, and then he decides, okay, uh, this kind of uh, uh, life, you deserve this kind of future. There may be some, uh, some adjustments made in our consciousness, the whole very scientific process that is used. We are prepared then for our next body. It's all done by higher authorities. We do not choose. Just like in this life, we did not choose which family, what kind of body, which family we got, which part of the world, what year. It's all decided by higher, higher authorities. So Yamaraj makes those decisions and then we end up getting a body and it's not necessary that the body will be uh, this human form. Even it could be any of the species of life, it could be better or it could be a lot worse. We are given assurance that uh, if we stick to this path, we will not go to the court of Yamaraj. So, uh, this, this is the case of Ajamil, and he was meant to be punished because he had committed so many sinful activities. Uh, you know what sin stands for? Sin, S-I-N. Somebody was there in Hyderabad? No. <laughs> this is somehow, this was an interesting revelation. Sin, sin stands for self-inflicted nukes. Self-inflicted nuclear weapons. That is what sin is. We are throwing nuclear weapons at our own selves. That is what sin is. How many of us would like to blast nuclear weapons at ourselves. It's most destructive, but all of society, that's how they're living. Every day they're bombarding themselves, not other people, that is also going on. They're bombarding themselves with these self-inflicted nuclear weapons. So all these, uh, this SIN lifestyle, we end up in the court of Yamaraj, and this decision is made. But those who take to the path of purification as given by Shri Prabhupada who is just like Mahaprabhu is the uh, avatar for this age, hmm? this age. Uh, next 10,000 years, some time has passed out of that. Mahaprabhu is the avatar for this age, but next 10,000 years is a golden period. And we just started recently. Srila Prabhupada is the Acharya for this age, hmm? not for the 70s or 80s, he is the Acharya for this age. So, if we take shelter of Srila Prabhupada and Mahaprabhu, then we do not go to the court of Yamaraj. Hmm? Different, different department is dealing with our future. Hmm? So, uh, but, but this... Uh, Opportunity has been taken up by all of us, but most people have not taken this opportunity. Most have not, which is very saddening actually, to see how society is going on all over the world, and they have not taken shelter of Srila Prabhupada and uh, Mahaprabhu's mission. So, in our small, humble way, uh, we are trying to share these wonderful gifts with other people so that they may not... Uh, it's nine o'clock now? Okay, five, five minutes? Okay. So, uh, uh, we are trying our best to share this gift with others. And this is our, uh, our principal duty, not only to live life in such a way that uh, we are on the path, hopefully, to becoming nice Vaishnavas, nice devotees, free from all kinds of impurities, free from all kinds of bad habits, uh, free from all kinds of bad thoughts, 
Hmm? Every third, every thought, every word, every action is pure. Hmm? That's what we want. Uh, and uh, we want to help others uh, through Prabhupada's teachings, like this Bhagavatam books, uh, Krishna Prasadam, Holy Names, uh, so many other programs, activities. So we want to be able to share this. And uh, there's one... Okay. There's one uh, story I want to share with you from one of my godbrothers who uh, I trust completely. He has been here, you know him. Some of you know him quite well, others may not have met him because he came some time ago. He had this, uh, um, it is explained in the Shastras that when there is some dream that involves the spiritual master or the Lord, then that is considered to be uh, reality. Hmm? Reality. So this uh, uh, <laughs> devotee, he had a dream about Yamaraj. That's why I want to tell you that. And what was the situation? Yamaraj was, was in his court and the, there was a long line of people who were going to be judged by him. That means they had committed a lot of sin, a lot of offenses, so therefore in, they were in Yamaraj's court, right? So when they were lined up and, uh, uh, and they were being judged by Yamaraj and given different kind of punishments, plans we made. And it was actually, this lineup was the lineup of not you and your leadership, but the other is Khan GBC. <laughs> it was a lineup of the other is Khan GBC. And um, one person was in that lineup also ready to be punished by Yamaraj, and that was myself. He told me. I was also in that line. So I was going in the line to be judged by Yamaraj and given some horrible future, who knows. Why? Because I had done, uh, you know, I had supported the wrong people, assisting them, big way I was assisting them in a big way. Uh, so, uh, uh, th this was not something that is pleasing to Srila Prabhupada. He's very forgiving. So, then uh, when I, in that dream, when I came close to Yamaraj, then uh, Yamaraj said, no, no, not him. He has rectified himself. You take him out of this line. So I was reminded of that. I, I had not, you know, I had forgotten that, but when I read this book, I was reminded of that, that past, uh, that uh, uh, I, I was headed in the very wrong direction, and then somehow Prabhupada saved me. So in your case, you don't have to make those kinds of mistakes as, as I did. Hmm? You don't have to stand in the line of Court of Yamaraj because you are not even to go to the court of Yamaraj. You are already from the beginning on the right path, with the right leadership, the right devotees, the right practices, the right understanding, the right attitude of, in a humble, submissive way, uh, practicing Krishna consciousness, doing your duties, doing your service, and just satisfied with whatever uh, service Krishna should probably arrange for you. No ambition to become equal or better, not even any ambition to become better than any other devotee, hmm. or become senior to any other devotee, or uh, position, or authority, nothing, nothing like that. That desire Vaishnava does not want. Hmm. Just what is my service? I'm totally unqualified even to practice Krishna consciousness. I don't know, by some extraordinary mercy, I have been given this opportunity. And I'm totally satisfied whatever Krishna arranges, Prabhupada arranges. And I have no ambition, anything more 
than to do my service. Hmm? That is Vaishnavism. And we may actually uh, uh, be surprised that that may lead to a very special um, connection with the Holy Name, with Srila Prabhupada, with the deities here, with the devotees. A, a big transformation within our thoughts, our actions, our deeds, our consciousness. We may be surprised how the consciousness changes in such a wonderful way with this kind of a simple, humble service attitude. And that is the greatest success, the transformation that we feel within ourselves. Not, this is not a corporate hierarchy, a ladder that we are going from this level to this level to this level to this level, you know, based on position or this or that. That is, that is not the transformation or the success that we are seeking. We want to experience a very... Uh, wonderful changes within our own selves. And that is guaranteed. That is guaranteed. This is such a wonderful, powerful uh, process. Uh, we don't have to go step by step even, like the staircase. This is the elevator. It's a very supersonic elevator. You got in the elevator and very soon we are at our, at a, uh, the progress that we've made is very astonishing. So uh, I'll stop here. Any questions or comments? Thank you very much. Shri Prabhupada ki jai.